Rousing fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to night five of Tony Atlas's 12 Days of Christmas. I'm Dan Marotti, joined by the jolly man himself. I'm Dan Marotti, WWE Hall of Famer, a.k.a. Tony Atlas. There you go. I don't know what exactly that meant, but Tony, I think maybe you've been sipping on a little something in the eggnog a little bit. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Paul Bearer means the world to us. He started this drive with us back in 2012. We carry on his name while carrying on a very important commitment to try and make sure Santa Claus's GPS is up to date to reach every kid's house on December the 24th. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it used to be in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! All right. Tony, right now let's check out some of the great merchandise that's part of it. It's that time of year again, and there's two great ways to help. First, we have our annual Holiday Headlocks Mega Raffle, where one lucky fan is going to win the entire jackpot of prizes. You'll get the NXT TakeOver Chicago pay-per-view chair, a variety of NXT authentic autographed posters, a Tony Atlas signed artwork print, a personal phone call from the WWE Hall of Famer himself, and dozens of more prizes including books, DVDs, autographed photos, trading cards, shakers, cups, and more. You can enter the raffle for as little as $5 and it's open to fans anywhere in the world. The winning number will be selected after SmackDown on Christmas night. You can pick up your jackpot of prizes at MWF Studios or arrange for shipment. We also have our $20 merchandise bundle available as a great cost-effective holiday gift. For only $20, not only do you help our Holiday Headlocks toy drive, but receive a mystery WWE t-shirt in your choice of sizes, five autograph photos, a something to wrestle with drink koozie thanks to our friend Bruce Pritchard, and an autographed Christmas card. Money raised from our endeavors goes to quote-unquote upgrade Santa Claus's GPS so we can find every kid on his list. We don't want any little guy or girl accidentally missed because of a technical error, so please do what you can to help. Whether you're just a fan of Christmas or enjoyed Paul Bearer's work with The Undertaker in WWE, this is a chance for the professional wrestling community to come together for the holidays. All that and so much more, Tony. they got to head on over to BostonWrestling.com, enter the raffle, get the merchandise bundles. You can win big, but more than anything, everyone that helps is going to help the kids out, and that's what's most important. That, that's right. You know, pennies add up to dollars, dollars add up to hundreds, and hundreds add up to thousands. So what little you could give is going to be appreciated. Don't feel bad if you're going to put if you're going to put five cents in the kitty. Do that. At least you gave. All right, Tony. Again, we're trying to treat these fans to give them more great content. Right now, we're going to flash back to a studio visit with another. I'm going to guess a soon-to-be WWE Hall of Famer, a gentleman. We spoke about the passed away this summer, Big Van Vader. Mm. Fast forward a little bit through '94. WCW became the Hulk Hogan show. Less emphasis on the athleticism with a lot of the guys that were there and 80s WWF wrestling. Yeah, it just became a, basically it was a throwback of, of the old WWF. Um, you know, but hey, it, I don't know. I, I think what we had before Hogan came, the Sting and the Rick Rude and that, that group, right? And, Myself and Ron Simmons, I think that group would have matured into, uh, with a few additions, you know, would have turned into a, quite a company. Look at what all those guys that you just mentioned, how they turned out once they went to WWE. Yeah. Um, could the same have happened in WCW? In other words, what Hogan left behind, Vince took. Right. Yeah. And he did a hell of a lot with it. Yeah. So. In other words, that company that was in place with Sting and myself and, 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 and uh, Ron and Mick Foley and Rick Rude and Sid Vicious, pretty good group of guys. And the list goes on and on. Yeah. I know I'm forgetting somebody. And then it just changed. And it, like I said, it became the Hulk Hogan show. And they did pretty good. You know, they, they created the NWO. And, and I think, again, to be fair to Eric, you know, he matured and jumped on board and, and uh, they did very well for a long time. Memories of your matches with Hulk Hogan? I, I just, um, 
you know, when, when you wrestle someone like a Shawn Michaels or a Mitsuharu Mizawa uh, or Sting, you know, the, it was challenging. It was it was fun. This was different in terms of you know it's, it's kind of like holding an old man's hand, you know. And I'm sure I'm gonna catch shit about that one, but you know he, this he had was, to be it was, gentle to a degree, so he didn't break the the toy. <laughs> it was um, like in slow motion, just as boring. Mm -hmm.